All right. Hello, everyone. Hello, Cornelians. It's great to be with you. My name is Ryan Lombardi. I'm the Vice President for Student and Campus Life. And we're trying out a new series called Real Talk with Ryan. So we'll see how this goes. But I'm very excited today to be joined by Aaron Scannell, who is the first um, of my interviewees or my conversations. I'm really delighted to be with her. She's a senior. Um, also owner of the Big Red Bun Instagram account, which has lots of fame on campus, perhaps uh, more, much, not perhaps, definitely more famous than me um, and many other of the Cornell accounts and people. So uh, Aaron, really glad that you're joining me today. Thanks so much for doing so. Would you just take a minute to introduce yourself to uh, those who will watch this? Yes, so hi. Um, a ton of you haven't seen me before because I don't really post pictures of myself, but um, <laughs> I'm Erin. Um, I run Big Red Bun. I owned Finn. I've had him for like two years now. Um, I'm a senior. I'm an animal science major, and I'm really happy to be here today. Thanks, Aaron. I, I, you're, I was laughing that they're not used to seeing you. They're used to seeing Finn. He's with you today. Is that correct? Yes, He's nearby. He if people want to give him a quick uh, make sure. Yes, you can say hello. <laughs> <laughs> There's, the little nose is twitching. I love it. Yes. As always, we'll let him get back to his nap time, right? <laughs> yeah. Aaron, so this, and for everyone watching, this will just be a conversation between Aaron and I, just um, talking about the things that are important to both of us. I've got some questions for her and she may have some for me. And it's just a dialogue and a conversation to talk about life at Cornell. But Aaron, if I can start by maybe asking you to tell us a little bit how you ended up at Cornell and your own journey to Cornell um, and what that's been like for you. Yeah, so I was actually a transfer student. Um, when I applied my senior year, I was given the transfer option. Um, so I did my first year at uh, the University of Delaware as an animal science major, and then I transferred my sophomore fall, um, and it was great. Um, I lived on West Campus. It was awesome, but it was like a little lonely there. You know, I lived in a single all alone. Um, so soon after I got Finn. Um, soon after you arrived to Cornell, you did? Yeah, so yeah. Finn didn't come into my life until my second semester at Cornell. So my spring of sophomore year um, was when like Finn kind of like appeared in my life. Yeah. So what, I mean, being a transfer student, right? I mean, coming in that second year, um, I recognize some social connections have already been formed with the, you know, after students in their first year class, did you find that challenging to come into that environment? Yeah. Yeah. It was really hard. Um, where I was housed, it was with some great girls who um, were all friends, but it was really hard to like, kind of like Put myself in there, especially because I was housed in a single. Mm -hmm. uh, so there wasn't like a lot of people. I know like my first week here during like orientation, I didn't live with any transfers. So my dorm was just empty. And it was okay. like, are people actually going to show up? <laughs> and then they did. But it was a little hard to just like make those connections with people because everybody already had their stuff like figured out. And I was just like showing up. Mm -hmm. um, so it took a little bit. Of time in my life. I just have to ask, you said University of Delaware. So are you from the, that region around Delaware or just curious I because I went to college down in that general vicinity also. Yeah, I'm from Jersey. Um, okay. So I'm from Northern New Jersey, but a lot of people from Jersey end up going to University of Delaware. I went to a college outside of Philadelphia and I was actually thinking about the University of Delaware for my master's program. I ended up going somewhere else, but I was considering going there. So. Yeah, it's a great school. I loved it there. It was hard to make the decision to transfer, um, but I couldn't say no because this was always my dream to come here, especially for the animal science program. Well, I'm, yeah, Cornell is amazing, right? <laughs> I mean, although I was going to say too, Delaware, isn't that uh, isn't there a connection between the current president of the United States and the University of Delaware? Yeah. As I understand it. Yeah, so. when I was there, it was his first year like back on campus. So he would like kind of be around sometimes. He had like an office on campus. So it was super cool. That's interesting. That's interesting. Well, and he spoke here at, at convocation um, in between, right? After he was done with his vice presidency yeah. and obviously before he was elected to the presidency. So very interesting. So so that spring of your sophomore year, that's when you then, um, well, I don't know the term, you adopted, you purchased, you rescued Finn. How does, I, how does yeah, this work? I did, I did purchase him. Um, it was a very funny situation that ended up with me like purchasing him where I was like sitting in class one day um, in one of my lectures and I was like, you know what, like, I really want another bunny. Um, another bunny would be really nice. So I ended up going on Facebook Marketplace. Okay. And I looked at the source up, like, of all good things, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I looked up like Holland Lot breeders like near me and I found this one that was like on my way back from home so in between like New Jersey and Ithaca 
And I was like, oh, let me email them. And they had one bunny left. And that is how Finn came to be with me. And so uh, let me, you, you said another bunny. So this is not a new thing for you. You've had a bunny before, is that right? Yeah, so I used okay. to, when I was younger, I had, I had French laps. So um, they're like 14 pounds. Um, and so how like, big is Finn? Finn is about three. Three pounds, okay, so that's a substantial <laughs> did, difference. Yeah, I did downsize a good amount. Um, but I've always loved bunnies and I was just like, you know what? I really want another one. So mm-hmm. I did it. And ever since then, a, a match made, huh? Yeah, yeah. We're just the best of friends. So how does it, I mean, for, for all of us novices out there, I mean, tell us, and I know even have, I've seen this on Instagram, some questions about, you know, how do you take care of Finn? There, there was a question recently, I think about a carrier. How do you, how do you bring him yeah. around? Like, tell, tell us a little bit about just daily life with him and then we'll, we'll move into some of um, some other questions. Yeah. So daily life with Finn, um, it was definitely adjustment, like being at college and then having a pet like with me, because a lot of people think like bunnies are like really low maintenance and they're just not, Uh, (laughs) especially Finn. He's like such a ham. He always needs like attention all the time. But a lot of the time it's just taken like, okay, like I have a 9 a.m. class, but I have to get up at like 7.30. So that way, like I have time to get ready, but I also have time to get Finn ready. Um, because, you know, he has to eat every morning, he has to have new water, I have to change out his litter box, more hay, and just like, kind of like spending time with him, um, because I want him to be lonely, Uh, especially just like in my room by himself, like, I just feel like he has to spend some time with me, so it's definitely like a good chunk of my time, Um, especially like once it gets like nicer out, I like to take him outside a lot, because I can't even imagine just being like stuck in a room and not having any time to like run around, so he has spends a lot of time outside, like especially today, it's beautiful outside. Yep. So he'll be outside for the afternoon. So it's definitely like a lot of people ask like, oh, like, do you think it's like easy to have like a small pet at college? And I always say no, because it's not the easiest thing, especially like say you want to go over to like your friend's house for the night. Well, you have to make sure either you feed before feed him beforehand or have someone feed him while you're gone and just like check in on him. Like there's a lot of planning that goes around it. You can't just like not go back to your room for like 12 hours and be like, oh, like he should be fine. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of planning that always goes into my days. I actually appreciate that very much. I'm I'm reminded from your comments that when I was in college, I actually had a dispute with several of my roommates about this because there was interest in getting a pet. And my concern was whether or not it would be an appropriate environment for a pet, right? If, you know, we were very busy and gone out of the apartment, you know, 12, like you said, 12 hours a day and who was going to really take care and give that attention. So I I really appreciate you hearing your intentionality around that with Finn. Yeah, I think it's definitely been easier because I'm an animal science major. Like I understand like how much he really needs. And like, I have the background of all different kinds of animals. So I'm able to recognize a lot of things too. Like, oh, you know, like, maybe he's not eating enough. Like maybe like I should like give him a little bit of like vitamins or anything just to kind of like make sure everything's good. So I'm, I'm very much on top of him all of the time, but I guess it's a good thing. That's and, it, and fitting, like you said, with your, your program yeah. study now, you don't, so you don't take him. I mean, I, I recognize we're in a little bit different circumstances now. Some of your classes may be virtual, but when they're not, you don't take him to every class then, or you do, or it, it kind of no, varies I- depending on. Yeah. So Finn is an emotional support animal. So he has no access rights. Okay. So like service animals, when they like perform a task for you, um, they have complete access rights to everywhere, but he is emotional support animal. So he has no access rights Mm -hmm. except for housing. So he's protected under like, I think it's like the Fair Housing Act. So I can't be denied housing because I have him, Mm -hmm. but he's also like not allowed in stores that aren't pet friendly. He's not allowed in class. Um, He has made an appearance in the animal science building a few times, um, but that's been like by the professor's like request, like, oh, like you want to bring him um, because he really doesn't do much. (laughs) (laughs) He's come to like review sessions with me. Okay. Uh, He doesn't really go into buildings ever. Gotcha. Now tell us then about how and, and why you decided to create the Instagram account. It's, it's been, you know, kind of wildly successful. I know um, you've gotten attention locally, nationally, everything in between for this account. So what prompted you to start taking pictures of him and doing the things that you do with Finn on campus? Yeah. So it kind of started as soon as I got him. So I bought him made this Instagram account because um, I had run like a couple of smaller Instagram accounts in the past, you know, I'm sure everyone's seen Instagram accounts for like people's dogs and it's like Mm -hmm. a couple pictures just to like share 
Um, so I wanted to do that. And I was like, you know what, Bigger Red Bun is such a cute little name. Um, it just kind of like came to me one day and I was like, oh, you know, that's perfect. I think I made the Instagram account before he actually had his name Finn. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was super funny. So it kind of started there and I was going to use it as a way to just share pictures with my friends because, um, oh, hi, um, because I, uh, I didn't want to spam them with pictures of him, you know, like I didn't want it to be like, oh, um, here's all these pictures of the bunny today. Like this way they could like subscribe to pictures of him, but I wouldn't have to like spam them with pictures. And same thing with my family, because when I got him, they actually didn't know. Um, they, they, they didn't know that you had purchased him? No. Oh, okay. So I went home for our winter break that we used to have in February mm -hmm. and um, grabbed my like old rabbit cage uh, because he was so little. And then on my way back up here, picked him up and brought him back and just did not tell my family. Um, I figured it was easier to ask for forgiveness if they got mad <laughs> than to ask for permission before I got them. Right. Um, so I kind of made the account to like just share pictures. And then soon enough, like um, I told my mom about it and she was like, oh, like you should take him around campus a little bit. Like your campus is so beautiful. Why not like use that as a background for a lot of your pictures? So kind of more and more, I started like taking pictures of him around everywhere because there's so many great backgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, and then I did my, um, I did my first interview, like I think over a year ago now with Slope Media. Okay. Um, and that was the first time I told anyone that he was actually an emotional support animal. So before that, nobody knew. Oh, I see. Um, just because I was a little bit uncomfortable with the fact, um, you know, I just, I didn't really feel like everybody should know yet. Mm -hmm. Um, and then after that, I kind of started becoming more and more open to the idea of talking about mental health. And then one day um, I was talking to my therapist about it and she was like, you know, like you're just becoming to have like such a big platform. You should use it if you're comfortable with it. And kind of that changed everything on the account. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And is that when you then, I mean, use some of your messages I've, I've viewed myself, right? That, that have positive messages around resilience or mental health or other things, take care of yourself, resources, you do all kinds of great things like that. So that was really that turning point for you? Yeah, yeah. I just started realizing like, if I don't, if I have this platform and I don't really share anything, then what's the point in having it? Like if I don't do anything with it, what is the point of me having access to, I guess at this point, almost 10,000 people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What would you, so you, you just shared, and I appreciate your vulnerability and your authenticity about sharing your own reluctance initially to, you know, disclose that Finn was an emotional support animal and, and what that journey was like for you. Would you give advice to other students who might be struggling with that same thing or contemplating the same thing? And how has it been as a resource for you and advice you'd give to others? Yeah. So as a resource of like having Finn has been amazing. Mm -hmm. um the original thought within me getting him between me and like my therapist was like he's a great thing to come home to every day mm -hmm. um because I was spending like my first semester here I was in like organic chemistry and all of these crazy classes that were just really hard and I was spending so much time at the library I'd be at the library till like three o'clock in the morning it's not healthy no. um and the idea behind Finn was he's a great reason to come home and take a break he'll break up your day a little bit. And then when you get home, it's kind of just like a reality check. Like, okay, like I can sit on my floor for like 20 minutes and just hang out with the bunny because, and it, it's been amazing. Um, it was a great reason to get started. And then for like other students, I really just feel like being open to other people about your mental health is okay. one of the best things. Um, I found that being more open about it has sparked so many conversations with my own friends where they're like, oh, you know, like I can, I can talk about this and we can not have a stigma around this. And that's really what I've been trying to do is just be more and more open and kind of end the stigma that, oh, like we shouldn't be talking about this. Like, no, we should. And it's the best way to check in on your friends is to just be very open with one another about what your struggles are and talk about it. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and I want to continue on this thread because it's, it's kind of a paradox that I think we experience at Cornell quite a bit. I mean, on one hand, like you say, I think that people are much more open about mental health than they frankly ever have been, right? I think which is wonderful yeah. and it's positive in so many good ways. Yet there's also this undercurrent of competitiveness at Cornell, right? That, you know, in this kind of comparing yourself, you know, a lot of people feel imposter syndrome, all these elements 
and probably still a fear embedded in there too to be vulnerable and to disclose these kinds of things. And so it, it it's a it's a dissonance, you know, a musical background here. It's a dissonance that exists um, that I still struggle with a little bit for our students. And how can we just really focus on lifting each other up and trying to support each other and being able to be our true selves and and let go of some of this notion of, you know, competitiveness or the other things that might creep in there. Um, I don't, it's not a question, but it's just an observation that I've had. I don't know if that feels right to you or feels fair based on your experience as a student. Yeah. yeah, especially like having the account now, I've had so many people just reach out to me like, this has made me feel like so much better. Like just seeing this in the morning is just like, oh, like a great way to start the morning just to like see like a cute picture of bunny. And I always say like my like DMs are always open on the page and I've gotten so many people just like asking me questions about like, how did you feel transferring? Um, how did you find your place? All this kind of stuff. And it's been amazing just to be a resource for a lot of people um, who have a ton of questions or just someone to talk to. Sure. That's, that's amazing. And, and one of the things too, I think you talked about the, I don't, the distraction is not the right word, but this notion that you come home, you have someone to be with, you have, you have a reason to come back to your apartment, your room. Um, there's something about being a caregiver, right? I mean, there's a reason why yeah. people talk about community service being good for the soul. There's a reason, of, you know, caring for others. And that's a part of what you're doing too, right? Is you've got someone to take care of, something to take care of there. Yeah, no, I definitely, it was always just the best thing. And he, he's my emotional support animal, but for a lot of my friends, like, him making an appearance just like in our living room is like, oh, like the bunny's here. Like, this is great. It just kind of like uplifts everybody's mood. Um, and he's helped me kind of like find my place here. Um, because when I, my first year here, it was kind of really hard for me to figure out where I belonged after not being here in my freshman year. You know, I did join, um, I joined where I live now, the co-ed fraternity I'm in and um, they're fantastic. But it was really hard to just like figure out like where do I find my place on campus? There's so many people here. I just feel like I'm one tiny dot in thousands. But within having this account, like I make a difference and like tons of people know who I am and I've kind of made my own place at Cornell. I didn't have to fit in with anybody else's. So it was really awesome. That's amazing. And I, and I think your, your observation about how it can feel as a student, right? One of many, there's 23,000 students on this campus. It's a big university, biggest in the Ivy League, right? And so how does, how does that feel? What, I mean, you, this is your method, as you said, and this was your way to kind of find yourself and figure out and find your place at Cornell. Any advice to others that you would, you'd, you'd share based on your own experiences with that, who may be feeling that same, um, uh, dilemma or challenge, Erin, about finding their place here? Yeah, my biggest advice would be just don't be afraid to start something of your own. Because I realized I didn't really fit in with a lot of the other places people were going. So I started something up for myself. Yeah. And I think that that's really hard to do is to just like throw yourself into something and be like, I hope this is going to work out for me. But it always does. Yeah. It always will. You will find your way. And you just can't give up. That's great advice. Thank you. Now, one, one I don't, last question. I am mindful of our time here, but I, I am curious, you know, this has been an extraordinarily difficult year with COVID and it's created a lot of isolation, a lot of feelings of, of you know, kind of ampli amplifying the feelings we might have already had or the stressors we might have already had in life. And even those people with, you know, kind of the best coping skills or resilience, whatever, I mean, I think everyone has struggled just mightily this past year. And so uh, just to check in on how you're doing and how you've navigated this and, and how you're holding up and, and whether you'd have any messages for the rest of the Cornell community on that front also. Yeah, well, I, things have been great for me, you know, during the initial, um, when we all got sent home last, last spring. March, I, yeah. yeah, I stayed here. Um, so I was here all throughout the end of the semester living in my house, um, because at that time, actually, as soon as we got home, um, that like Saturday, I got a call from my parents and they were like, Hey, like you shouldn't come home. Mom is sick. So my mom actually had COVID when we got sent home. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to stay, I, I can't go back there. Um, but honestly, like this past year, it's been really, really hard. And my biggest advice is to just check in on your friends. Yeah. Um, and take some time for yourself because things this semester has been exceptionally hard for a lot of people you know um, a lot of people are just very burnt out and feeling like the workload never ends mm -hmm. and I think the best advice is to just take that like hour and take a walk around BB Lake take that time and just 
listen to like your favorite podcast or do something where you're not doing work 24 seven, because at that point, it's really even hard to focus. It's kind of counterintuitive. Like, yes, you're studying, but are you even paying attention to what you're doing? You need to focus on yourself first, you know, eat a good meal, take a walk for, take a walk around BB Lake, do something for yourself because you need that time. Your mental health is just as important as your studies. It's more important, I would argue, and I yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, I don't mean, yeah, I wasn't trying to undercut you there, but it's just, it's so critical. And I think that, you know, you said take an hour, take two hours. I mean, really carve out that time because without our own well-being, we, you know, we can't, we can't be there for others. We can't be here to be students or staff or whatever our roles are on campus. And so it's just so important. And this pandemic has, has amplified a lot of challenges in our society for sure. But I think this acute awareness of the need to take care of our mental health is certainly one of them. Definitely. Aaron, I've been kind of dominating this and we're getting low on time, but was there anything that you wanted to ask me? I apologize for not giving you a, oh, a lot yeah. more time. I, I think I just had like two, like not very important questions for you. Um, but I would just love to know like your opinion, like how do you feel? What, how did you feel when you first found out about Big Red Bun? Like how, what did you think about it? Yeah, the first time I saw your account, I don't remember exactly when it was, but I it, it was like, oh, that's cute, you know, like that's that's really sweet and great, you know, you 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 take really nice pictures too, so you have a lot of skill there, um, and the backdrop and and you know, I just had that kind of probably the same reaction that a lot of people had, but then I I think as I watched what you were doing with the account a little bit more and the messages and some of the content that you were trying to push through there. Um, I think that's what then prompted me, of course, to reach out to you and make the connection and just check in um, and, uh, and try to learn a little bit more. So, um, so it was yeah. that, you know, Finn is a, is, a, is a cute little bunny. And so it was hard, it's hard to not see that. And like you said, kind of bring a smile to your face. That's why it's perfect to have him like be the face of a lot of things because like it's a cute bunny and then there's also like a message yep. so it's easily like shared around because people are like look at this but also there's a great message with it um so that's been like really one of the highlights of the account well look i i just want to say as we wrap up you know how much i appreciate your energy and your effort and and like you said i think a lot of students on our campus and you probably have followers from much further away too but certainly for the cornell students um, who you know you and I are close to here on campus, uh, how much uh, they and we all appreciate your efforts. And, and Finn, we appreciate your uh, photogeneity and, <laughs> and, and, and be it all over campus. That's right. Um, and, and just everything you do. So thank you for being a part of trying to uplift this community, Aaron. We really appreciate it. And thanks everyone for watching today and uh, tuning in. We hope to do more of these real talk with Ryan's coming up. If you have suggestions, please let us know. But everyone, please continue to take care. As Aaron suggested, check in on your friends, check in on each other. Just be that, um, be that friend, be that companion uh, to those around you. And remember to do all you can to uplift other Cornelians. Finn, you going to say goodbye there? Say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks again, everybody. Take care.